Welcome to Life and Living. I'm Joanna Gagas. You know, typically here on PBS, we don't like to brag about our guests, but given the accolades of these two guests that I'm joined in the studio by right now, I just can't help myself. So if you don't mind, I'm going to say, uh, Rook Coffee, owners of Rook Coffee right now, Rook Coffee was just named by BuzzFeed as one of the top 24 coffee shops you should visit before you die. You were ranked lucky number 13. Mm -hmm. yes. Right now with me, I have Holly Migliaccio and Sean Kingsley. They are the co-founders and owners of Rook Coffee. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Thank having us. I had to much. brag a bit because you're a <laughs> New Jersey company. You started just a couple years ago and you're already ranked. There's more, by the way. I could keep going. <laughs> um, C CNBC's Escaping the Cube just featured you. And you were also named one of the seven best iced coffees in America by Maxim Magazine. Yeah. So yes. huge accolades. Yeah. Great year. Sean, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a happy smile on your face. Yes. Looks like a <laughs> lot of work has gone into this recognition. A lot of work, yes. How did Rook Coffee get its start? I know it's a wacky story. Uh, you know, I was originally working in the investment banking world and I quit uh, in 2009 and I moved from New York City to San Francisco and I enrolled at Berkeley uh, studying in healthcare and I was studying in coffee shops and I kind of got this inspiration about opening a coffee shop uh, on the East Coast with a West Coast kind of style. Holly, how do you get pulled into this mix? Well, I had also quit my job uh, in, in 2008 and I didn't You had know. been working where? Uh, I had worked for Yahoo for the bulk of my career and then a company called The Ladders, internet sales um, and marketing and operations, a little training. And I saw, I, you know, I sort of got to the limit of the corporate world and, and thought, well, you know, I want to do something different. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, I traveled for a while. I took a trip to Southeast Asia for a few months and sort of soul searching. Uh, and my layover home was a stop off in San Francisco and Yahoo had me working there for a couple years previously so I knew the city but now Sean was living there and I said well I'm crashing with you and um, and, and you like, two knew each other from childhood? <coughs> yes. About 10 years old, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so I said I'm crashing with you, he's like good because I have a proposition and I was like a proposition, you know? And it was, you know, he, he, he had been in coffee shops on the west coast and uh, I knew the West Coast, I knew the, the coffee culture from having lived there. And what is the coffee yeah. culture in the West Coast? Is this a thing, like West Coast coffee shops? Um. You know, I think that there's a, a, an, a focus on quality and there's a focus on having direct relationships with farmers and finding the best quality in, in the world and showcasing it to customers. Um, and that's something that we brought to the East Coast, we feel. Yeah. Okay, so you obviously had Holly in mind. You knew that she yes. had some skills that, that complemented a skill set that you already had, right? You had the finance background, she was sales and marketing. That's right. So how do you say, okay, we're going to take this, we're going to turn it into something, and it's going to work here in New Jersey? You know, we, we did about a year's worth of a business plan, uh, first starting in San Francisco. Uh, Holly and I traveled from San Francisco to Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, we went to over a hundred coffee shops in that region, collecting information and learning the business. But what um, tangibly, what tangibly did you say, okay, is going to work in New Jersey? This is the model. Break down the model of what Rook is and why, why it's successful. Well, Rook, it's, it's focused on um, finding the best quality coffee, uh, roasting it ourselves, and then grinding and brewing every single cup. Every and cup is made to order? Every single cup okay. is made to order. And we don't do any espresso in any of our shops. It's just plain, simple, American-style coffee. And Holly, you also don't have Wi-Fi, is that right? Well, we don't have any seating. It's so it's, it's less of your typical cafe-style coffee shop um, and more of a, you know, a, a place to get really good coffee. So we have sort of the European style counters that you can stand at, but no Wi-Fi, no, you know, big elaborate food menu. Uh, we don't make anything in the house. We don't toast or anything like that. It's very simple to model. And itself. your customers love this. And they, they love it. I mean, we're in New Jersey and, you know, people are in and out of their cars, dropping the kids off, going to work, shopping. So, you know, the model, we don't have drive through at this point or anything like that, but the model does work for our area in Monmouth County. Yeah. You're, you're solely in Monmouth County right now, but I know you started with one shop. You've now expanded to six and two under construction. That's right. 
Um, but I, you know, I want to talk about the actual coffee because for us coffee lovers, and I certainly mm -hmm. am, the, the kind of coffee that you're serving is, is what really impressed me. So I know the quality and the standards are of utmost importance. Sure. Where are you getting the beans and what are the standards that you're holding those farmers to? We get most of our coffees from Central America and Indonesia uh, with one from Africa. And most of the coffees that we buy are direct from either farmers or cooperatives. So we know exactly who we're buying from. Um, we taste all coffees from those regions. And do you we visit those regions? We do. Uh, Holly and I actually just got back from Guatemala visiting with the farmer that we buy from uh, year in and year out. And I'm going to Costa Rica in about a month to visit farmers in that region. So you're making sure that they are meeting the standards that, that you expect. Yes. And now here, when people come in, there are the, the I think it's nine different beans that, that yes. you're harvesting, nine different countries that you're harvesting from. Um, in terms of the actual coffee, there's no espresso, but what are right. the options in terms of coffee? Well, when a customer comes in, especially if it's their first time, usually no. They look at our menu, it's a little bit different than typical. It's all single origin coffees, no blends, no, no added syrups, um, but it's categorized in mild, medium, and dark. So we try to steer them into the category and then we can help them choose a coffee by asking them how they take it, if they take it black, if they take it with cream and sugar. We have an idea of which coffee they might like or which would suit their palate and then we'll steer them that way. Now, I hate to say the name, but Starbucks is a, is a coffee brand that everybody knows and recognizes. Sure. Do you feel in a sense that you're competing against the Starbucks of the world or do you feel that you're in such a different market that it doesn't even matter? You know, we're, we're actually directly across the street from a Starbucks in one location and right next door uh, from another location. And we don't feel like we compete directly uh, with Starbucks. I think that they're catering towards a certain type of customer and we have a different type of customer. Um, so there's some overlap, but, but not, not so much. What's interesting, I know, is that both of you have expressed to our producers that the impact that you've had on the community is something that really matters to you. Holly, explain that. Uh, you know, we started the business thinking, okay, the plan, the business plan had us behind the counter for two years, um, and we, we just about made it a year. Uh, but, you know, we had to hire people right out of the gates, um, essentially within about six months. And, you know, it, it wasn't something that we had thought about at the beginning, but we started to create real jobs for people and careers now. Now we have, you know, we do have a corporate side of the business as well, but we so have... you've been an economic driver. Uh, you know, we have over 75 community. employees at this point in five years. Um, so locally, you know, we're really, we're really proud of that. And expanding yeah. to North Jersey, we hope. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> now I have to ask before we go, Rook, what does the name Rook mean? Well, Rook, originally his proposition was to do it in Brooklyn. We had both lived in Manhattan, so we knew the city life, and he said, let's do it in Brooklyn. And when we started to do our research, we decided on Rook because the word Rook is inside the word Brooklyn. Um, then we well, said, now right, we're well, what's Rook? Jurors. You know? <laughs> <laughs> jurors. Um, but the bird is a black crow, also a Rook, and that's okay. where the logo came from. Well, I want to thank you both for uh, sharing a little bit of your inspiration with us. It's been terrific. And please, bring one of your shops to northern New Jersey. <laughs> I promise they'll do well, especially if I'm a customer. We'll work on it. Uh, thank you. Holly Migliaccio and Sean Kingsley, co-founders and owners of Rook Coffee. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. I cry when I'm hungry because it's really hurtful to my stomach. When you feel sad that you don't have food, like at the table, I feel weird because my tummy starts grumbling. Sometimes all that makes you feel better is food. Also brought to you by New Jersey Resources and by the Northward Center.